Um, this is a video to demonstrate the addition of diffusion tensor imaging to the neuronavigator. This is the demo patient who was struck on the right parietal region uh, and uh, has uh, uh, symptoms such as uh, paralysis on the left, does not shave the left side of his face. Uh, and you can see the scalp potential Z score is a significant deviant from normal in the right parietal region. Uh, I can uh, move the, remove the scalp. Uh, and you can see the cortex is deviant from normal. But what I want to show now is, uh, and I can also remove the cortex, and we can uh, look at the slices. In this case, it's the axial slice. But now I want to demonstrate the addition of diffusion tensor imaging. We click the coherence scale. Right now we got coherence, and then click on DTI show, and there's the DTI. Uh, and this is all of these bundles over here on the right now are shown. So we have a full complement of uh, diffusion tensor imaging bundles. Um, and we can uh, evaluate the Z scores. In this case, his right parietal region is very significantly deviant from normal. You can also see the cerebellum is deviant from normal, particularly on the right side. So we are examples of cerebellar sources. Uh, we can move the scale down or the axial slice so you can visualize the diffusion tensor imaging. We can look at other types of connectivity. For example, can look there too. Uh, we can look at the uh, Lag coherence, this is instantaneous coherence, but uh, we'll click data type, then click lag coherence, and now you're looking at the lag coherence, deviations from normal, data type, and phase differences. And now there's the phase differences. It's very delayed phase differences. And we can also look at information flow using a phase slope index. And there's the Z scores for information flow now superimposed upon the, uh, the diffusion tensor imaging fiber bundles. You can change the axial and you can add uh, coronal and sagittal slices, etc. Uh, and there's nice to have those as, as navigation points. Uh, to look at the, the different fiber bundles that are deviant from normal based upon uh, the z-scores from our, our normative database. So this is a new um, addition to the navigator uh, that it will be, be released soon as we test it. But this is a heads up on uh, what we have at this time. And uh, we'll be adding more things in the future. And we also can, at this time, add center voxels. Those are the Broadman areas. Click connectivity, then go to functional connectivity. And now we've added the, um, the regular Broadman area connections that we had in the past that are coordinated or spatially in register with the diffusion tensor imaging. So I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to get rid of the center voxels and just have the diffusion tensor imaging here at the coherence values, which you can see are uh, deviant from normal in the right parietal region uh, where this person was injured, as well as the Cerebellum. This is his left hemisphere. And his right hemisphere. So this is a quick view of uh, the navigator. Uh, that includes diffusion tensor imaging and all of the fiber bundles now as opposed to just the 12 that we had in the past.